Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Now, when I first watched Rogue One, uh, I remember seeing this scene and thinking to myself, wow, is this like a modern day war drama? Jeddah in many ways looks like an ancient city in the Middle East. There's the presence of several mysterious religious groups, the ruins of an ancient civilization. Some people have even said that Jeddah city looks like Jerusalem's old city. And having been there several times, I have to say that I agree. And inside the city, there's a constant asymmetric battle between a group of hardline rebels known as the Partisans and the local Imperial Garrison. Born during the Clone Wars on Onderon, the Partisans were originally a ragtag group of fighters that were trained by Republic Special Forces, aka Jedi, to maintain an effective campaign against the pro-separatist alliance government in power. The charismatic Saw Gerrera would emerge as the group's leader during the fighting. When the Empire occupied Onderon, the Partisans once again went to war. Today we'll be asking two questions. One, were the Partisans unlawful combatants? And two, were they T-words? And yes, I have to say T-word because YouTube doesn't seem to understand the difference between a real-life organization and one that exists only in Star Wars. So this self-censorship has been brought to you by YouTube. Thank you very much. In order to determine if the Partisans are unlawful combatants, we use Earth's international laws because they are much more objective than the Galactic Empire's own laws, which are naturally biased against the rebel factions. You guys remember what happened to Brody Rook when he first met Saw Gerrera? Poor Gully. He was introduced to Borgoliths, a giant tentacle monster that had the ability to read minds. The only problem is that the monster sometimes left its victims' brains in shambles. According to the Geneva Convention, persons taking no active part in hostilities, including members of armed forces who have laid down their arms, shall in all circumstances be treated humanely. The following acts are prohibited, cruel treatment and torture. Torture is defined by the UN as any act by which severe pain or suffering, whether physical or mental, is intentionally inflicted on a person for such purposes as obtaining from him or a third party information. In that context, I believe using Borgolot on someone like Brody Rook is considered a war crime. And from what we've seen of the former Imperial pilot, he was a lawful combatant, clearly uniformed, and had surrendered to the custody of the rebellion, and therefore protected under international law as a prisoner of war. Next up is the case of Jyn Erso. At the age of eight, she was forced into hiding after the Imperial military came seeking her father. At the request of her parents, Saw Gerrera personally retrieved Jin. For the next eight years, Saw treated Jin as if she were his own daughter. Knowing nothing else besides war and combat, he turned Jin into a fighter and was quoted saying that the girl was one of his best soldiers. The last time I saw you, you gave me a knife and loaded blaster and told me to wait in a bunker till daylight. I knew you were safe. You left me behind. You were already the best soldier in my cadre. I was 16! Poor Gully. Now, this makes a really interesting background story, but in reality, Jin Erso was a child soldier. That's a sad truth. And most likely, she suffered from severe emotional trauma that affected her childhood development. Child soldiers are prized combatants for several different reasons. Their young and innocent appearance can throw adult soldiers off guard, giving them a tactical advantage, and children are very easy to manipulate and brainwash and generally don't understand the concept of danger as well as older individuals. What Saw should have done as a responsible guardian was place Jin far away from the front lines or at least put her in a support role. From what we can tell, he did neither. So this is a clear violation of OPAC, which prohibits the recruitment of individuals under 18 as combatants. In all fairness though, many countries, including the United States, have refused to follow this protocol. But in 1977, additional protocols to the Geneva Convention stated that the recruitment of children under the age of 15 as combatants is considered a war crime. A third incident refers to an encounter between Saw's partisans and Imperial forces on Onderon shortly after the Clone Wars ended. An Imperial patrol led by ISB agent Alexander Callus was ambushed by a group of rebel soldiers that was led by a Lasat mercenary under the command of Saw Gerrera. Instead of allowing the Imperials to surrender, he executed all of them. According to the Geneva Convention, willful killing, torture, or inhumane treatment of POWs is considered a grave breach against international law and considered a war crime. The fourth final thing we have to take into account is the partisans' lack of uniforms and how they presented themselves. Under the Geneva Convention's prohibition of perfidy, it is illegal for combatants to pose as civilians, something that we've seen the partisans do several times. This endangers the civilians and often leads to more unnecessary death. 
Because of this, the Partisans were not considered privileged combatants who are protected when captured as prisoners of war under the Geneva Convention. With all these cases taken into consideration, I believe were the galaxy governed by similar laws as we have here on Earth, Saw Guerrera and his Partisans would be arrested for war crimes. But ultimately, the Rebel Alliance did win the war, and had Saw and his officers survived the war, he might not have ended up being prosecuted for war crimes. We've seen time and time again that victors of a conflict are given amnesty during post-war tribunals. Now the second thing I want to discuss is whether Saw's partisans were T-words. Or you know what, let's just call them taints because that makes it easier. We'll call them taints. Due to its general ineffectiveness and several questionable member states, the UN has no definition for who is considered a taint, and refuses to rule out taintism as an acceptable tactic in warfare. Fortunately, NATO is a much more unified organization and does have a definition of who is a taint. Here is their definition. The unlawful use or threatened use of force or violence against individuals or property in an attempt to coerce or intimidate governments or societies to achieve political, religious, or ideological objectives. From what we know of Saw Gerrera and his partisan group, their attacks were usually restricted to imperial targets. While the tactics used were extreme and often caused collateral damage and civilian casualties, they weren't exactly taints. On top of that, their goal were usually of strategic military value which was inherently the problem with partisan groups. The rebellion could never beat the Galactic Empire in conventional warfare. The disastrous mid-rim retreat following a short rebel offensive after the Battle of Yavin is indicative of overwhelming imbalance between the two sides. Groups like Saw's partisans that focused on tactical victories did very little to dent the overall Imperial war effort. If anything, the heavy civilian casualties and collateral damage these campaigns caused oftentimes alienated local populaces and justified the Empire's actions. The Rebels were fighting an ideological battle, which was about winning the hearts and minds of the people. It was only through popular rejection of the occupying forces of the Empire that the Rebels could actually win. Which is why, ultimately, the alliance to restore the Republic distanced itself from groups like Saw Gerrera. Well guys, that's our verdict. Let us know in the comment section below if you disagree or if you agree. And uh, let us know if you enjoyed the format of this episode, because if you do, we'll try to do more episodes that examine the legality of certain events in the Star Wars timeline. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss those episodes. And a special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there, also known as the Soul 3 Resistance. Um, in light of this video, if you are under the age of 18, please do report to your commanding officer. You will be reassigned into a non-combat role until you come of age. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching this, you are... Oh,